Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today I want to share with you an Ask a Ninja about from Deborah. She had a question about how to handle water once it gets on top of the vapor barrier. Stay tuned. If you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, humidity control, insulation. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, check out our DIY store and our franchise opportunities. Deborah wrote in off of one of our uh, YouTube videos, after having our crawl space encapsulated, we had a pipe break and had standing water on the barrier. Now I have a wall where upon heavy rains, it is leaking in on our barrier and is sitting there and makes my house smell mildewy. It just sits on top of the plastic. Should we just tear out the vapor barrier? We never had any smells until we encapsulated. We don't have a sump pump or a dehumidifier or a fan in the crawl space. So Deborah, I just want to say that, um, you know, believe it or not, we get this scenario quite a bit where people just think that the encapsulation is just putting in plastic, running it up the walls, running it up the, uh, the pillars and overlapping and attaching it. But keep in mind that plastic or vapor barrier is one piece of what we consider to be the encapsulation process. For example, if you live in a humid environment, just encapsulating with plastic and you still have humidity coming from the outside, different things like that, it's, it's not gonna do anything for you. As a matter of fact, the plastic is just one piece of the entire situation. So the, the reason why you're having a mildewy smell is because the water that got on top of the plastic from your plumbing leak and from that wall that is now leaking from the outside, which I don't think has anything to do with each other, um, is because that water, it's the, the air is so saturated with humidity that the water cannot evaporate. Okay, and that's where the dehumidifier comes in. If, if you have a, a situation where you have 80, 90, 100% relative humidity in that crawl space, the wood is absorbing the water, your subfloor and floor joists are absorbing that high humidity, and then that wood now starts to grow mold, which is the mildewy smell that you're talking about. It's not necessarily the water you're smelling unless that water has become stagnant from sitting there so long, but it's normally from mold beginning to grow on the wood. So if you had put in a dehumidifier when you encapsulated or, or put all that plastic down, that dehumidifier would have already gotten rid of that, that uh, water that was standing on the plastic. So not having a dehumidifier is not recommended when you encapsulate. And of course, Crawl Space Ninja, we always tell you that you should have an active ventilation fan to address soil gases. It has really nothing to do with controlling humidity. So you wanna encapsulate the, the crawl space with plastic, put in a dehumidifier, and then add an active ventilation system for ventilation of soil gases. And soil gases can include everything from radon to methane to even ammonia, okay? So there's all kinds of different soil gases that come up out of the soil and get access to the crawl space. And the vapor barrier does not stop those soil gases, so they just come right up into the main area of the crawl space and eventually work them way, their way into the living space. So having an active ventilation system will take care of that. But let's, let's talk about something else. You've got water coming in from a foundation wall. That needs to be addressed with an interior water management system, typically a French drain installed just below the earth's surface uh, leading to a sump pump. And it doesn't sound like, as I mentioned, that the flood water that you talked about from the pipe leak has anything to do with that. So you got two different water sources. One is taken care of by a sump pump and trench. And that flood leak could have also been taken care of by a sump pump and trench if you had installed a dranger drain in the basin lid of that sump pump system. And I'll put a link down below to what the dranger drain is and our sump pump and basins and all that stuff so you can check all that out. So to answer your question, should you just yank out the old plastic? Let's say you do. You put in new plastic, guess what happens? You get another plumbing leak a year from now, God forbid, but you do. That wall that you talked about is still gonna let moisture in. You're still gonna have a water, standing water and humidity problem, even if you just yank out the old plastic and put in new plastic. So I encourage you, all of you out there, if you're going to encapsulate, 
Make sure you have a water management system installed under the plastic. Put the plastic in. Make sure you have a DHU and ABS to address any water that could possibly get on top of the plastic. Hope that helps you out, Deborah. I'm Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day, and we'll see you later.